Hi, I'm Wintley Phipps, and welcome to our program, Perfecting Me, Becoming More Like Jesus. I'm so glad you've joined us. My guests today on our program are Ruthie Jacobson, head of prayer ministry of the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor George Florimon, pastor of the West Park Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Mrs. Adley Campos, speaker and president of Family Wellbeing International. You'll hear from them a little later. Come with me to the Garden of Gethsemane, a place I have been privileged to visit myself. I want you to see the night that Christ was betrayed. Christ was in the garden he loved, his head bowed over, his spirit in agony, his anguish so intense that his body was pushing not sweat from his pores, but drops of blood. All around him was the horror of a great spiritual darkness. Every sin committed since the dawn of creation was by his own choice weighing upon his shoulders. The light of the Father's presence seemed to have been removed from his life. Because of your sin and mine, Jesus was experiencing the eclipse of his Father's smile and favor. At one point, Jesus stretched himself out on the earth crying out for our salvation. Never before had he been in such distress and sorrow. He said to his disciples, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Then Jesus went a little further from where they were and prayed. He prayed a prayer that was wrenched from his soul. O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Then Jesus got up from his prayer. He went to his disciples only to find them fast asleep. Wake up, he said. And then turning to Peter, Jesus said, could you not watch with me one hour? And then Jesus spoke a word to Peter. But not only to Peter was this word spoken. It was spoken to all mankind. It is one of the greatest admonitions ever spoken by our Lord, a timeless strategy for all heaven-bound souls in search of a life of victory over sin. It is the only approach to victorious living for those seeking protection from the devil and emancipation from sin. Jesus said, watch and pray. In Matthew 26, 41, Jesus said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. What Jesus said to his disciples that night in Gethsemane was about so much more than staying awake in the middle of church or in the, in the middle of a spiritual outpouring. That night in Gethsemane, Jesus gave to all of us a formula he wanted all his followers to live by for the rest of their lives. Jesus was saying, be vigilant and always in prayer, or you will fall into temptation and into sin. And remember, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. For those who want to avoid falling into sin and temptation, Jesus says, remember this for as long as you live. The only way to be victorious is to learn how to never tire in watching and praying. Watch meaning be alert and observant for the tricks of the enemy. Watch meaning live in a conscious state of spiritual surveillance always watching out for the next temptation coming your way, the next temptation in your environment, even in your thoughts and in your thinking and in your reflexes and even what you do naturally. Jesus was saying to us, if we don't want to fall into temptation, we have to be constantly watching for the next deception of the devil. Brothers and sisters, all of us have terrible temptations that are ahead of us. And we need strength and protection to endure them. And that day in the garden, Jesus gave to us a vital key to strengthen character and yes, protect the purity of Christian character. He said, watch and pray. And both activities 
surveillance and communion, communion with God, they need to be constant. Surveillance and communion need to be constant to be effective. Here Jesus says, a prerequisite for all spiritual victories is to watch. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So watch. To tell the truth, watching out for and living in anticipation of temptations that are sure to come was not something I was ever taught to do in my Christian life. But with God's help, I've learned to watch. And sometimes I've had to learn to watch the hard way. In learning how to watch, the first thing I had to understand was there is no end to watching because the devil never lets up with his bombardment of temptations. Watching is an all day, every day, if you're up all day, 24 seven activity. From the time you open your eyes in the morning to the moment you close them at night, you can be sure of one thing, that moment by moment, hour by hour, every day, 24 seven, the devil is on his job, bringing another temptation your way. He does it on your job, your, in your home, through your phone, your computer. He even tempts you in church. <laughs> and you have to recognize that for you, there will be no let up, no break from the temptations the devil will constantly throw at you. That's why Jesus said, you better become excellent at watching and know that until the day you die or until Jesus appears in the clouds, whichever comes first, there will be in your life a relentless barrage and onslaught of urges and desires and temptations. And there'll be no let up in the office of pleasure from the devil. So watch, watch and pray. I want you to see this video from our friends at the 700 Club that will help strengthen you as you watch and pray. Watch and pray. Traffic was stopped and I actually drove right up to the remains of this green Mercedes. And it was on its side with the roof facing me as I pulled up. On August 4th, 2013, Deputy Richard Adair of the Ross County Sheriff's Department in Missouri responded to an accident involving two cars and a head-on collision. It was obvious that this was a really bad accident. It wouldn't be surprising if it was a fatal. The girl, the driver, Katie, all I could see was the top of her head and one hand that was sticking out. I actually held her hand and talked to her and tried to calm her. But none of his training or 30 years of experience prepared him for what came next. She said she wanted to pray out loud. And then I became mortified. <laughs> Richard had grown up in church, but to him, prayer was just an empty ritual to a far away, uncaring God. I didn't know how to pray out loud. I knew, you know, the, the Our Father, I knew the Hail Mary. I didn't know how to pray out loud. That, for me personally, was mortifying. Curtis White, the gentleman there, I asked, can you pray with her? Yes, no problem. And he took her hand and I made the excuse to go check the other driver the other vehicle. The other driver suffered minor injuries, but had been drinking and charged with a DUI. As for Katie, it took fire crews two hours to safely cut her out of the tangled wreckage and put her on a chopper to the nearest trauma unit. Meanwhile, Richard couldn't stop thinking about the young woman who, despite being in excruciating pain and holding on to life, continued asking people to pray. Katie never screamed. She never cried out loud. She never cursed. She never was angry. 
All she did was pray out loud. And I just couldn't believe that as, as a 50-some-year-old man, how that young girl had that much faith in God, and I didn't. That's because over the past year, Richard had been trying to come to terms with the disappointments and failures in his own life and was searching for meaning and purpose. You know, I wanted to go to church. I guess I was looking for something that was missing. Then later, Richard and his wife, Debbie, visited Katie and her family at Blessing Hospital in Quincy, Illinois. I looked at my wife and I said, I can't believe how happy everybody is. Like, it's almost like we're at a birthday party. And her mother looked at me and she said, we, we could be planning a funeral right now and Katie's alive. And because of God's grace, Katie's alive. Finally, Richard understood what he had been struggling with. I was missing a relationship with God. I had no relationship with God. Soon afterwards, Richard and Debbie went to a local church service. I knew the first time I was there, we were talking about God and Jesus, and it just, it clicked. I, I don't know how to explain it. It just, I knew at that moment, it was like someone opening their eyes for the first time. In the coming months, Richard started reading the Bible and praying. As he did, he came to understand and accept God's love and forgiveness. During that time, he committed his life to Jesus Christ. I realized that I had to become right with, with God and correct things. I had to let, let go of anger that I held against others and just let it go. It's not, not for me to judge. It's over. Release that. Let it go. As he grew in his relationship with God, the people he felt he needed to share his new faith with the most were his children. I'd never even talked to my own children about God. I mean, they went to parochial schools. They, you know, did all the sacraments that our religion had you do, things I failed to teach them. And that was hard. It's, I mean, it's not easy going to your children, your grown children, and saying, hey, I messed up. I didn't know God and didn't know how to show you who God was. As Richard lived out his faith, Debbie and his children also made a commitment to Jesus Christ. Harry, I'm a 53-year-old man who's 30 years as a cop, and I'm filling up because it's emotional. And it is. It's, it's, um, it's hard to explain. It's, sometimes it's hard to put into words. God used Katie that day in her suffering. And it's all because of a young woman, a stranger, who had the faith to pray. It's a simple prayer is just talking to God and having that relationship to be able to do that. Joining us again are my guests, Ruthie Jacobson, Adley Campos, and Pastor George Florimon. We were talking about Christ giving us the blessing and the gift of his righteous character. When we surrender our lives to Jesus, he gives us the greatest gift that any human being can ever have, and that is his character. And as he gives us his character, we now then have a responsibility to protect it from being stained. It's, it's you know, when the Bible talks about washing our robes and making mm -hmm. sure our robes are white, it's really saying, make sure that the righteous character that God gives us is not stained. And we all know that temptation and falling into sin stains our character. Uh, and we want to talk about that a little bit. And uh, Sister Campos, I want to ask you this. How do you think falling into sin stains character? Because, you know, when Jesus said, watch and pray, he didn't just say watch and pray. He said, watch and pray that you don't enter or that you don't fall into temptation. He was trying to protect us from staining that character. What are your thoughts about that? My thought is that if he, he's telling us to watch, 
because it can happen. Yes. And we must do something to avoid for it to happen. Do something, take certain mes measures that it will not happen. And that's when he says that we need to watch that we might not fall into temptation. Temptation will always come, but we don't have to fall into it. Yeah. And the only way to avoid it is by a constant communion, a watch and pray on our behalf, on our, pro on our part, in order to avoid falling into temptation. Pa Pastor Foreman, uh, what are your thoughts about that? Well, uh, similarly, I believe that watching is uh, us being vigilant. I think that's, that would be a good word to uh, yeah. um, describe watching, to be vigilant, um, because the enemy uh, is going to, as she said, tempt us. But uh, to be vigilant means that we take the proper necessary precautions mm -hmm. so that we are uh, ready uh, for when the enemy does show up. Where we have a way of escaping or not staining the character of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and it's not a question of uh, will he try to do it. It's how soon, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? How soon? Yeah. How soon? Because it's going to happen. That is his goal. Can you imagine that since heaven, since he was thrown out of heaven? The one thing the devil has been trying to do is searching the earth for wherever he can find the character of God being manifest in the life of a human being or in any place. And he just wants to go after that to destroy it and to, to deface it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, sis, Sister Ruthie, how do you see and what do you think we can do and must do to avoid staining the character that is given to us? Well, I think it's uh, this is something so vitally important, and I believe that the enemy is strong, and he's stronger than we are. Yes. And someone has said, until you know you're in a war, you don't know what prayer is for. Mm. But prayer makes the devil tremble. And so mm -hmm. even though we are weaker than the enemy, our great God is so much stronger and I think that being watchful and vigilant is keeping our eyes on Jesus and realizing that we have someone much stronger than we are, that we can call on any time, any moment. And this is why I think it's so vitally important that we pray every hour. Mm. We just stop and Amen. say, Lord, praise you. Mm. I need you. I thank you. And I, I thank you for fighting my battles. Yes. Uh, Sister Campos, how do you think watching and praying helps you to develop character, uh, develop Christ's character. The more, I, okay. yeah. the more I pray, the closer I am in communion with God, and the more he is able to protect me from committing sin. Yes. Staying away from that that is so awful to him, so awful that made his son go to the cross and suffer what he suffered in agony in that Golgotha. Yes. So it is so important that we maintain that constant watchfulness. Yes. What yeah. What do I mean? <laughs> Are we going to be on our knees all day long and not yeah. do anything else? <laughs> no. no. Right. It's the attitude yes. of prayer. Yeah. I can be talking with my God, with my Lord Jesus, with my Holy Spirit all the time, no matter what I'm doing, because my thought can be connected to him constantly mm -hmm. right. if I choose to do so. Sister Ruthie, you had a thought. Well, I was just going to say the beautiful thing about our God is that even if you don't feel like praying, yes. even if you don't even realize your need, yes. even if you don't uh, have a desire for prayer or Bible study, you can go to the Lord and say, Lord, give me a hunger, give me a thirst mm -hmm. for you, for your presence, Amen. for your Holy Spirit. And teach me how to pray with the authority, with the, in the name of Jesus. And I just believe he's waiting to hear those prayers and answer them. Yes. Uh, Pastor Florman, when you watch and pray, really it's also an opportunity for you to behold Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it is. Really. I, I, so it's not just watching again for 
uh, I call it sin detection. You know, you're in sin detection <laughs> mode. <laughs> you know, you're, you're vigilant. You're why, and, and you really have to be. Hey, in the world mm -hmm. we live in today, you have to have all yes. your antenna out. You have to be very mindful uh, because the encroachments are so subtle. The devil mm -hmm. is so slick, so smart. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. He can do it with your eyes closed. You know, he can get to you <laughs> with your eyes closed. You don't have to yeah. have your eyes open. He'll bring memories yeah. back, you know. But when you watch Definitely. and you pray, you are communing with God and beholding. And of course, you know, the, the Word of God says, by beholding, we are changed. I don't know if you have any thoughts yeah. on that. Yes. Well, that's exactly where I was going uh, to go next. Uh, Sister Cantos, I believe her name is, yeah. Campos, was saying yes. that, uh, talk that Campbell speaking yes. about prayer. And I think that's so vital because, you know, when we pray, we are drawn closer to God. We are in the proximity of God. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to behold him, right? And so uh, it's kind of like the more we spend time with God, the more we spend time in prayer to Jesus, the more he, his character rubs off on us, right? right, right. So, so that when the enemy attacks us or when temptation comes our way, we're able to uh, exhibit some of the things that Jesus would do uh, because uh, as a result of us having spent that time with him. Now, I, I must Amen. tell you, and, and go ahead, Ruthie, you have a thought? Well, I was just gonna say scripture prepares you for prayer. Yes. yes. yes we, can't, we can't really read the word of God with an open heart yeah. without being drawn to prayer because God is there in his living word. Yes, yes. I, I've got to tell you, honestly, out of all my 40 years of pastoring and preaching and teaching, I don't know of any other way to break a bad habit. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any other way to get victory. So what Jesus mm -hmm. was giving us there in Gethsemane was a formula for victory. It was really the only formula. I mean, you can go to the psychiatrist if you want to and try to get victory, or you can go to the psychologist uh, to get victory. You might get a pill or you might get some strategies to, to unlearn, learn right. behavior. But the only way I know to finally get the victory over anything that the devil uses to chain you is watching and praying. So watching Amen. and praying is key to protecting the integrity of the character God gives us. Sister Campos, uh, can you think of an instance in your own life perhaps or another person's life, another person's life where watching and praying got them the victory? Yes, I can think of so many couples that have been in deep problems, marital problems. And when they finally go to their knees, they yes. fall on their knees, yes. humble themselves before the Lord and allow the Lord to work in their lives, surprised at the change, the transformation yes. that comes yes. as a result of prayer. Right. That is all we need to do, just surrender ourselves mm -hmm. and fall on our knees and say, Lord, I can't but you can, and I am giving myself to you that you will transform me. Yes. Many marriages at the border of divorce have had the victory in Jesus because they started to pray together. Right. Morning, noon, evening, yes. together, right. prayer, yes. prayer. That's the only thing that can help us Sister to be Ruth, changed, to be transformed. Beautiful. Sister Ruth, we just have a few seconds. Uh, did you have a thought on that? Well, I do. And that is, it's from Second Chronicles 16, 9. Yes. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. Yes. On behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Yes. So no matter what the need is, yes. no matter what the need is, if we look to him, in faith, he's going to show himself strong. Yes. That's an exciting possibility. Yes. <laughs> Nothing yes. is impossible. Yes. Pastor, Pastor Farman, last word, just a quick word. De definitely. When it comes down to prayer, I believe wholeheartedly in the power of prayer. And 
sometimes, you know, God would allow a delay of a, a delay to His response to become for us our spiritual conditioning mechanism, right? Oh, yeah, that yeah, that yeah. forces us yes. to continue and to strive into prayer. Yes. And at the end of the day, the Bible is clear. Jesus said to the disciples, when we pray, if we have faith, we can even command mountains to be removed Absolutely. and That's to be right. cast to the depths of the sea. So prayer is indeed efficacious, yes. but we have to be fervent in our prayer life. Thank you so much for being with us today. The reason we must watch is because the enemy is deceitful. A man got a job as a night watchman at a factory one day and there had been a lot of thefts by workers on the night shift. And so every morning when the night shift workers passed through his gate, it was his job to check their bags and pockets to make sure that nothing was being stolen. Things were going really well the first night on the job until a man pushing a wheelbarrow of newspaper came through his gate. Aha, he thought, that man thinks he can cover up what he's stealing with that newspaper. So he removed the newspaper only to find there was nothing there. Still, he felt the man was acting strangely, so he questioned him about the paper. The man said, I get a little extra money from newspapers. I recycle. So I go into the lunchroom, pick up all the ones people have thrown away. And so the guard said, okay, and he let him pass. But he decided to keep a close eye on him. The next night, it was the same thing. Night after night, week after week, it went on. Month after month, the same guy would push the wheelbarrow of newspapers past the guard's checkpoint. The guard would always check the newspapers and find nothing. Then one night, about a year later, the guard reported for, a wor for work, only to find a message had been left for him telling him to report to his supervisor. He walked into the supervisor's office. Before he could say a word, the boss said, you're fired. He said, fired? Why am I fired? What did I do? I, I, I've checked and nothing has been stolen. And the boss said, but what about those 365 wheelbarrows that have gone missing? <laughs> Our enemy is deceitful. And so we have to watch and pray. I'm Wintley Phipps. And remember, to be a Christian means to be Christ-like. All day, every day, no excuses.